parts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. This is the Saturday morning Viper Trading Webinar. If you're here to learn how to trade the futures markets using the Viper tools, you're in the right place. Got to get our standard disclaimer out of the way. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures and Forex trading does involve risk, and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar or other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And, of course, everyone in here does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. All right, well, if there's no questions on the disclaimer, this is part two of a two-part series, Anticipating Trade Setups. If you have not already seen part one, it is posted in the subscriber area. I strongly urge everybody to watch that if you can. I will do a brief recap of the basics before we get started. So let's get over to some charts. <clears throat> Excuse me. After which I will launch into a series of trade setups that we will all collectively look at here as a team. All right, stand by. Let's get over to screen one for some chart setups. Can everybody see the NASDAQ chart? NQ, full range. We do have quite a few new people joining us. If you're new, welcome. And I'm going to do a quick orientation. Um, what you see here is uh, uh, the indicators that we provide as uh, Viper. Uh, let's see, every, everybody seeing this chart, NASDAQ, NQ, four-ranged chart? You should see background colors. You should see bar colors, blue, yellow, red. You should see the bands, the mid-band, thick line in the middle, four bands above, four below. You can turn on this predictor. This predictor is more or less uh, ovals that show swing levels. You can toggle them on and off depending on whether you want to see them at any given, uh, particular time of the morning. Just turn them on and off like, like such. And really, if you want to try to, you know, keep things as simple as possible, and that's what we like to do. We, we don't like complications um, because it makes it a lot tougher to see trades and take trades, and so we try to keep things as simple as possible. And so th I'm going to do just a couple of minutes on a recap from part one, which was Thursday night. <clears throat> Excuse me. All financial markets, it really doesn't matter what instrument you're looking at, whether it's, you know, any of these instruments right here, the, the currencies, it doesn't matter. They all have similar price patterns. And the two primary types of price patterns are where you you are in a what we call a trading range. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. One of the ranges you can see would be like such. Make this a little bit larger so you can see it. This is called a trading range or consolidation or sideways. There's different names for it, but basically, essentially, you're, you're going sideways. Uh, the lines here, uh, Guna, th these, these are, um, this is the bands right here. We have the mid band, which is the, the large line in the middle of the bands. And then we have uh, the, f the four bands. We have one, two, three, four bands above it. And the outermost is shaded. And we have one, two, three, four bands below. And the outermost is shaded as well. Those are called the bands. And the middle one is called the mid band. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you're in a trading range, there are some characteristics you're going to notice about it. First of all, the middle band here is going to be flat and going just horizontal, just flat sideways. Okay? And then sometimes the price action at the top of the range will come out more or less kind of into the outermost band like such. And sometimes they'll get to the outermost band at the bottom down here. <coughs> Excuse me. So there is not a series of higher highs or higher lows. The highs are about the same, and the lows are about the same, and so we call that a range. Now, a pop question to make sure everybody here is awake. 
what is the acceptability of a trading range for us to trade it? We have several rules around that. I know a lot of you have come to many, many webinars, and you should know this off the top of your head. How large does a range have to be for us to trade it? That's a number. We should know that instantly. We should just automatically know that, right? Because we've said it a gazillion times. <laughs> <laughs> what's the size of a range acceptability for you to be able to trade it? Minimum. Uh, and I'm saying, what's, what's the minimum size of a range to trade it? I'll give you two more seconds. 20 to 25 ticks. Perfect. Pretty much everybody got that correct. Adam, Mindy, Rob, good. Peter? <clears throat> so 20 to 25 ticks. So, so we can just very quickly see right here in this particular range on the left on NASDAQ that you had support more or less down by 34 and you had resistance up here around 43. Plus or minus 9 points and there are 4 ticks in a point. So this range is about 30 to 35 ticks. This is a very tradable range. Um, not only because of its size, but, but also because of the fact that notice how clean and clear the support level is down in here, that these swing levels are more or less respecting this, this uh, bottom pretty well. Likewise, at the top, you can see that these swings up here are pretty clean and clear and well-defined, and so you're able to get in and out without too much confusion about it. Now, when you look at trading a range like this, um, you have to decide, it, it, it really comes down to a decision of your entries and your exits. Are you going to be selling the tops? Are you going to, and covering at the bottom? Are you going to be buying the bottom and uh, selling or getting out at the top? Or are you going to trade both sides? Let me ask you about this range. How, how would you all approach it? Buying the bottom, S, B, selling the top, S, or both. How would you approach this range if you were trading this? Would you be buying the bottoms, shorting the tops, or trading both sides? What do you think? If you saw this range, say, come Monday morning, what, what would you do? How would you approach it? like that. Oh, there's a good question. I like that one this year. That's good. I like that. Okay, we have buying. We have quite a few uh, buying the bottoms. Uh, a few bothes. Steph, Steph, Stephen would be shorting the tops. Okay. <clears throat> Let me give you, excuse me, I get this tickle in my throat. It's driving me crazy. Uh, this is what it looked like before and after. All right, so be before we got into this range, you had this sell massive sell-off. This was 744. I think this was Friday. This might have been Thursday. So here you had a sell-off. We went into consolidation, and then we bounce up, we come out, and we go into a little bit higher range over here to the right, around 830 Pacific. All right, interesting. Okay, now that I showed uh, more of the picture, we're getting more different answers coming in. Uh, Peter... Buying the bottom, selling the tops. Rob Long using the background as the guide. Okay, good, good. That's what I was looking for. This year would be short, shorting the tops. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good. I like those answers. I like those answers. All right, that that's what I was looking for. So 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 here's what it comes down to. The fact of the matter is, when you're going sideways like this, and the tops and the bottoms are so well defined, you could really trade both sides. You really could. Um, uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, if you were coming off of a large precipitous sell-off like you see right here, you come up, you come up well above the midman here, and the background ground turns green. This is what uh, Rob was saying here in his answer, is that by virtue of the fact that you had green mixed and then green backgrounds, that that uh, 
you know, from a technical standpoint, you probably want to be buying the bottoms and then go ahead and taking profits at the top. Now, if you were sell, if you were trading both sides, notice when you came over here and you broke out. In order to get in these trades, and we'll talk more about this in a minute, you're actually looking for rollovers. In other words, it's got to bounce and come up. It's got to hit and roll, hit and roll. Notice over here that it never hit and rolled. So there was no trade at the end of this trading this range when it broke out up here. There was no roll here. So you didn't actually get in it and get stopped out. Now, it's important to learn how to trade ranges. I know a lot of you don't like trading ranges. I, I Skype with quite a few traders all the time, and they most just do not like ranges at all. Um, but the fact of the matter is, if you don't learn to trade ranges, you're going to miss, oh, I'd say possibly as much as 50 plus percent of, of the trading in the markets throughout the course of the morning. So you're going to miss a lot. You know, if you're just waiting for mid-band setups or trend moves like this, you know, you're going to be sitting on your hands most of the day. Whereas if you can, you can just lob a couple of range trades in there, it's going to really expand your rep repertoire and help you quite a bit. Let's look over here. <clears throat> Excuse me, to the right. How about this range right here? How about this one right here? Is this tradable? What do you think about this one? This is the little upper range when uh, when NASDAQ broke out of this lower range. It went into a little bit of an upper range right over here. Is this one tradable, yes or no? What do you think? There's the top of it. There's the bottom of it. Remember our rules. Probably not too small. Okay, good. David D, not me. Okay. Adam, no. Ralph, good. So I think this is a very good illustration of the size of ranges that can be set up in, uh, in markets. You know, over here to the right, you're looking at, um, you know, support down here around 44 or 44.50. And you're looking at resistance up more or less kind of around this 48 area right here. So you're looking at uh, 44, 48, 4 times 4 is 16. So this is really about a 15, 16 tick range. It's really not tradable. Let's talk about entries and exits and ranges. So when you get into and out of a trade, we have what's called this notion of fading the top and fading the bottom. So what that means is that if you're going to buy support, you have to go at least five ticks above where the bottom support level is. So in this case, buying the bottom would be more or less buying it right in here. That's called fading. When you're fading a top or fading a bottom, you have to get in, you know, four or five ticks above or below where the swing is. So at the top, your, your trades would be right in here. Whether you're shorting or taking profits. So I have these larger lines, uh, these larger arrows here. I should be a little more accurate in my depiction of the trade. The trade is actually like that. Everybody see that? Yeah, the trade is actually, let me put the... Let me put the top and the bottom of these arrows where the trade actually is. So this trade here would be more or less like that. Yeah. You see that, everybody? So when you put four or five tops uh, ticks at the top, four or five ticks at the bottom to get in and to get out, you can see now why we do that. Because if you say to yourself, all right, well, I'm in a, I'm in a 12... 14, 15 tick range, if you're fading the top and fading the bottom, your trade over here would look like this. Right? Here would be your entry. You're fading the bottom. And here would be your exit or short. Up here, you're getting in and out, right? You're fading. Just like over here, you're fading. See the lines? Getting in and out. And so over here, you can see this is your trade right here. I mean, by the time you put in slippage and commission, there's no meat on the bone there for you. 
You see the difference between those two ranges, everybody? Yeah, that's a good way to look at it, Mindy. Yeah, and, and you know, it, 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 it's pretty easy to find these ranges in real time. You know, I get a lot of feedback sometimes where traders say, oh, yeah, you know, you the, here you are after the fact, armchair quarterback, uh, picking off these ranges. Well, the fact of the matter is, let me show you real quick. Here, here's how you can tell you're in a range very quickly. Let's come back over here, and then I'll move on to something else. Okay, here's our sell-off. Here's our sell-off. And so at 7.59, we came up, and we had a swing here, and we had a swing here. So what you do, and you see these lines in the room all the time. Gary does these all the time in the room. So we had a swing here, so we have a line there. That's where we hit bottom, and she bounced. And you can see here at 7.59, almost 8 o'clock, we had a very clear one, two, three times down. We put a line right here. Come up, poke up, and right around 8 o'clock, we establish a swing right here. So based on the current condition of what you see right here, if you saw this on Monday, what would you be doing right here? Is there a trade? Is this a trade setup? That's a, a, a team question. Is this a trade setup here? And if so, what would it be? Based on the current condition of what you see here from the left. What is that? Is that a trade, yes or no? And if it is, what is it? Phantom short. Ralph, you get the you get the quick gold star there. That's right. That's a short trade. That's a short trade, right? Come to the outermost band. We're looking for a rollover. So you came off this long, very precipitous sell-off here. We come up. We roll. We can't take out the bottoms. We're consolidating. We come up. We hit our head. We roll. Now, second part of the same question Looking at the short trade from the phantom outermost band here, where exactly is the entry? And I'm going to give you a choice. Bar 1, bar 2, bar 3. Which one is the entry bar? Bar 1, bar 2, or bar 3? Can everybody see where, I'm, where my cursor is right here? On the short... We're hitting resistance at the outermost band. Trend is still down from over here. We've come up to the outermost band, and we are rolling over for a short trade. Bar one, two, or three. Three is right here. Which one is called the which one is the rollover bar? Because you hear that all the time in the live room, right? Rollover. I'm looking for a rollover. What does that mean? Which one of those three bars is the rollover bar to get us short? One. One is my cursor here. Two is my cursor here. Three is my cursor right there. Which is the entry bar? Time's up. Three. Right. This is the reversal bar right here. Why is this the reversal bar? Why do we call that a reversal bar? Anybody not know why we call that a reversal bar? Those kill me. Well, you know, David D., I hear you. Look, you know, let me, let me speak to that for a second. I, I, this is probably one of the toughest types of trades to take. In all the trades of types that we take, it is one of the toughest. And the reason for that is this. By the time you get to this outermost band, it becomes a little confusing in the sense that you are torn between coming to believe that we are in a trend change because here you have a low, you have another swing low, swing high, swing high, swing low. You are starting to get a series of higher highs and higher lows. Furthermore, the background has changed to green, right? The bars are blue, you're getting a green stealth, and 
to count compound matters, you're getting the middle band start to slightly stair step up. So purely from a visual point of view, at this point right here, you could start to make the case that you're going that you are changing trends from down to up. Yes? That's very, very difficult. It, out, out, it, if I was to qualify all the different types of trades that we take, that's probably one of the toughest right there, those phantom shorts and the phantom longs, because you're starting to really become convinced that that's a trend change right there, right? Now, if and when you learn how to take those trades, um, you have to realize that there is a propensity for it to revert and come back to the mid band. So that is our initial goal when we take these outermost bar, uh, band phantom type trades. We want to at least have it get back to the mid band. Right? Now, in this case here, of course, we know support is below the mid band. See, it kind of dawdles around the mid band there for a little bit dawdles around the mid band and then comes down and checks the lower level right here. It is at this point, technically technically speaking, it's at this point right here in the rollover bar where it heads back down to and through the mid band that you know you're in a range. At this point right here, you know you're in a range. What I was trying to illustrate here is that you need at least two points to connect to have a range. Everybody see that? You have to have at least two points. You have to have a top and you have to have a bottom. If a market is meandering around the mid-band, not really putting in swing highs or swing lows, just kind of hanging out around here, that's not really a range, and that's not a trend, and that's not consolidation, and, and we all know that's not tradable. Question here from Mindy. Exactly, Mindy. Well, that's what I was trying to show here is, is, is that uh, you have to have two points to connect uh, on the, you have to have a line at the top and you have to have a line at the bottom to define the range. Yeah, if you're, if it, 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 the point that this market came up here, hit its head and rolled over and you took the short, whether you took it or not, really doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is that swing is now established. That's what I'm trying to say right there, okay? If a market comes up, see here you have the sell-off comes up and then it sort of meanders around the mid-band like that. You really don't have a range there. That That's not a range. That's not tradable. You don't have an established swing high or swing low. You do have this swing right here. That's been established. But you don't have anything up here yet. So that's just simply not tradable. You have to wait for the market to move out of this little consolidation patch, either up or down, to get the other defined part of the range. Does that make sense? I know we spend a, we're spending a lot of time on ranges. There, like I said, the reason for that is that Markets spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time in ranges, and um, you know if you don't ever learn how to trade them, you're going to leave a lot of the trading, you know, a big chunk, more than half of, of the session out that you just simply write off. And we don't, you know, we don't want to do that. Just hang tight for one second, please. Okay, I'm going to move on. I'm going to pull up some other instruments. I think everybody's pretty clear on what we're talking about here. I am going to, uh, let's see here, we got a couple more questions coming in. Uh, would, you, uh, would you also consider a trend continuation downward? It, well, Richard, see, in this case right here, um, uh, in the case of this uh, range that was set up, Trend continuation, in, in my view, out of this range right here, would be if uh, uh, this market came down here, say it rolled over over here, hit here, bounced slightly, and then took it out, like such, and then continued to you continued to see price action that looked more or less like this. This this would, uh, you know, in terms of the downtrend, would be considered you know, downtrend continuation. It would have to take this support level out. This is simply consolidation after a very large sell-off. Is scalping the most difficult part of your system? Um, Dave H., that's a good question. Um, 
uh, and, and that's another, uh, aside from like phantom trades and trading ranges uh, it being challenging, the other thing that's, that's uh, it, it is the notion of scalping. For those of you who are new, scalping simply means that you're taking quick profits and then you're looking for runners. Let's come over here, for instance. Let's look at the, let, let me answer it this way. Let's come over to the end of the range and let's look what happened. For those of you who were trading both sides, the final trade on this range was right here. And um, here is the bar reversal entry right here. There was some question. Let, let me just take a, 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 a minute or two and talk about bar reversals because there was some quite a few questions about that one, two, three entry question on the short side. So I would say one, two, three. Why is that the reversal bar? That's a question. Here, I'll do another one. I'll do this one on the short. Why is this the reversal bar? Why isn't it this one? And why isn't it this one? One, two, three. One, two, three. Why is the third bar considered the reversal bar? Why? This is important stuff. We got to know this because that's how we enter. <laughs> you know, I mean, it might sound pretty silly. Why is that a reversal bar? But, you know, it's pretty important to know what a reversal bar is if you're going to use it to enter trades, right? Why is that the reversal bar? What is a reversal bar? And why do we get in on it? Pretty important stuff to know, yes? All right, we got some good answers. It closed above the previous bar. Good, Claude. The lower the high of the previous bar is taken out, higher close. Good. When I try to scalp, I usually get a haircut. But, you know, Dave, tell you what, if you continue to try trading scalping type trades and they don't work for you, well, then you're going you're gonna to have to try you know, give a shot at some other types of trades like mid-band consolidation or other things. Yeah, yeah, so you have, it, it, in the case of the bars that we're going down, we have one, two, three, four, five down bars. Each of the subsequent bars are closing below the low and the high of the previous bar. One, two, three, four, five bars, yes? Which bars of these bars did not close below its previous swing? That bar right there, that's a reversal bar. Likewise, in the up, one, two, three, four, five. Now, if you're a purist, you could make the case that that is a reversal bar, number two, simply because it came up, hit a... a um, uh, resistance area and then reversed. See how you have in the characteristics of that without getting into too much about bar setups is you have kind of a doji type setup here. In other words, uh, it touched and did not close at the low of the bar. That's another way to look at it. See you have a doji right here. Came up, touched it, and then did not close, the bar closed right here, not at the high of the bar. But the fact of the matter is, when those are happening so quickly in real time, it's hard to see and take those, okay? It's hard to see and take those when they're forming in, in a real-time environment. Really, you need to have some kind of reversal. I wait for this bar to form and close right here, and this bar right here, to get in. You know, it's not as optimal entry as up here. But, you know, there's a lot of times where you get a bar like that and you get a head fake and then you get sucked into a trade, excuse me, you really don't want. When I see this bar form here, like this, and this bar like this, I, I am now convinced that this has turned around and is heading in the direction that I want it to, to, uh, to do. Yeah, Richard, see, there is, it's a, it's a, it's a subject of interpretation. Um, you know, and how you look at the two, at the three bars. You can get in on bar number two. You absolutely could. On the close of bar number two, you could get in on that trade, on that uh, trade right there, and it would be a somewhat better entry than the close of that third bar. 
no question about it. But in real time, that's really hard to take. Well, Peter, in the case of these two trades I'm showing right here, this would be bar one, still heading up, bar two, heading up, but didn't close at the high, see? And then bar three, reverses. Down bars, one, two, three. Everybody can see, of course, that this third bar closed above the high and the low of the previous bar. Bar three is the entry, Peter, on, on all these cases, is the, is the uh, reversal bar. All right, so we're in long, I'm uh, back to making the case of this range uh, long right here. We're long on the close of that bar. So when we say the word scalp, scalping in and of itself implies that you are going for very short, quick targets. Generally, that's going to be under 10 ticks, 6 to 8 ticks, 9 ticks, 10, maybe 12 ticks. And when you're normally looking for it to go up and hit or come close to a prior swing area, in this case, that would be there. That would be considered the scalp. Or you'd be fading it, so technically it'd be right here. Okay, that's the scalp part of the trade. So if you, we, we really strongly urge everybody to try to put at least two contracts on, especially if you're trading NASDAQ or YM or the dollar index, a $5, a five a tick instrument, um, simply because you can take this scalp trade right here, peel one trade off or one contract off of the trade. Your initial stop is generally 10 to 12 ticks below your entry. So that would be down here, your initial stop. Object Trader puts that in for you. Once we hit the scalp target here, we take our initial stop and come up to two ticks behind our entry right here. And we're looking for the second contract to turn into a runner. A runner would be where the market now starts to put in subsequent higher highs and higher lows and takes off. In this case, it breaks. Uh, it breaks the top of this range here and takes off. So now you have a runner. So when you what you do with a runner then is you take your trailing stop and you trail it up, you trail it up, you trail it up, and you follow, depending on how tightly you trailed it. The final second contract would be taken out here. Okay, pop question to make sure everybody's awake. What's the most important thing for you to learn when you start trading? Trail stops? Targets? How much money you make? How to scalp? Trading a range? Mid-band trades? Region boxes? What is this? If you were to pick one, if, if, if somebody came up to you on the street and said, tell me one thing that is the most important thing to learn and get right, in the beginning part of trading, maybe you're an intermediate stage trader. You've traded for a while. You're still developing your skill sets. What would be right at or at the top of the list? We'll give you 10 seconds to think about that. What would it be? What do you got to get right to make money? And by the way, while you're, while you're pondering the answer to that question, I can tell you this, that the answer to this question is more important than how much money you make. So it's not how much money you make. I'm just helping you out with that. All right, we got some great entry uh, 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 coming in here, answers coming in here. Look at this. Risk management, money management, those are important. Trade management from Ralph. Limit the risk, Stephen, that's a good answer. Moving stops in the proper direction, Mindy, I like that. Claude, money management. Do <laughs> I like this one. Hey, Carl, I didn't see you come in. Don't lose any money at first. Psychology of mind. Emotional control. Hey, Satith, yes, that's good. That's good. Those are all most excellent answers. All right, now this is my personal opinion. We all can, can have our opinions, right? It's the trade entry. Let me see how many of you got that right. David D, trade entry. Discipline, 
are my answers skipped? No, Guna, I'm, we're, we're seeing you. We've got a lot of people in here this morning. My apologies if I'm not uh, uh, focusing in on you a little bit. My apologies. We've got a lot of people in here today. Sorry about that. Trade entry. I mean, let's face it. If you can't get the entry right, does the rest matter? If you can't get the trade entry right, does the rest matter? No. So that's why we spend so much time talking about reversal bars. We talk about support levels and resistance levels. We talk about whether you're in a range or whether you're trending, whether it's a retracement trade in a trend, because we are focused so heavily on the entries. If you could develop any skill set out of everything that we do here and focus much, most of your attention in the very beginning on finding correct and proper entries, the rest of success for your trading will come from there. All right? Okay, let's move on. All right, I'm going to uh, spend enough time on that. Uh, let's get some other instruments done here, and I'm going to start asking a series of questions to see how much of this you have paid attention to. And I'm going to make these hard. Because the last few times I've done these, I've kind of given you some layups. Layup, me, that means easy. I've kind of made it easy for you. But I'm going to make them not so easy. Because let's face it, the market isn't easy most days, right? The market's really tough. <clears throat> I'm going to flash a series of trades up here. And I'm going to give you 10 seconds to answer on each one. And it's going to be trade entry anticipation. In other words, you're going to tell the team, each one of you here this morning, where the next trade is. Carl, that is exactly what I'm trying to say. I can't tell you how many people say to me this. This is one of the first questions I hear all the time, all the time, all the time. How much money can I make doing this? Well, how much money should I be able to make a day? You know, this week I was, did pretty well. How much money should I make trading this week? Well, the fact of the matter is, if you can't see the trade entry, it doesn't matter because you're not going to make any money. <laughs> not to be a jerk about it. <laughs> you got to have, it's a function of your ability to get in and out of trades. I can't, you can't really answer that question, right? All right, 10 seconds on the clock. Where's the next trade entry starting right now? YM. Nine seconds. I'm going I'm to throw a series of, I, I've got maybe, what, 15 minutes left here. I'm going to throw a whole bunch of these at you. When we get done today, I want everybody here this morning to be a, a trade expert. I want you to be so good at this that come Monday morning, you look at your chart and you know exactly what you're going to do. You don't even have to think about it. Seven seconds. Where's the next trade? Four seconds. There is a trade coming. Where is it? Time's almost up. Time's up. All right. Now, let me, let me, uh, I, and I have to say that I know some of you are extremely new, and that's, that's totally cool. And I've said this probably a thousand times, and most of you have heard it a thousand times, and that, that's perfectly okay, because sometimes it takes a little bit of repetition for, for you know, it's mind, muscle, memory kind of thing. I understand that. Many of you said mid-band. Now, you know, I will take that as an answer on under one caveat. I don't want to say that saying mid-band is a cop-out, but it really is a little bit in the fact that I have said numerous, numerous times, and you've heard Gary say this too, that it, we need to think about retracements as a range of possibilities. Right? You've heard me say that before. 
What does a range of possibilities mean? Well, markets can come for very shallow retracements and not ever get to the mid-band and roll over. By the way, we're looking for shorts. The trend is down. We've taken out support. The background color is red. Right? We've taken out these swings. Mid-band, all the bands are stair-stepping down. We are looking for a retracement trade short. Now, the mid-band is certainly a good target for us to think about because we all like to see the markets come at or near the mid-band for a rollover short. However, we know markets can come just shy of the mid-band here in a shallow retracement. They can come right to the mid-band. We really like that. Or they can go a little deeper. They can go up all the way perhaps as high as this 90 or even higher. So when we think about retracements, in our mind's eye, as we are envisioning out into the future where the market might go to for us to enter a trade, we need to think of it, it's healthy to think of an area or a range like this. Most of you I know probably just focus on that mid-band. You say, that, say 81. That's not the correct answer. And it's not healthy to look at it that way. Because, you know, there are occasions where it will go precisely to the mid-band and work out perfectly. And many times it won't. And so if you're so focused on the mid-band, waiting for 81, and it comes up only to here, you're going to miss a lot of trades. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay? Or if it goes way up into here, you're going to get freaked out because you think it's gone too far. All right? You've got to think of it like this box right here, like a little pitching area for, for, for softball or baseball or how, whatever sport you like. That's the sweet spot. Okay, so here's the market. Okay, where's the market right now? Right there. Where is it right there? Okay, let me do a little bit more. How about now? How about now? Well, it's too late now. <laughs> uh, the, the training is part art and part science, Guna. I mean, it, 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 by the way, okay, so yes, it came right to the mid-band. You, you mid-band traders you got your you got your region box right there you boxed it in we say by, by the way you're here in the live room box it in it's coming right to the mid band it's hitting resistance at 83 just above the mid band there box that in short only that's what that is that's that trade it came right to the sweet spot in the middle of our middle of our little area well the science part of it is the fact that we try to you know skew the odds in our favor by having these indicators and having some expertise and experience in knowing where markets are going to go, right? And we use that to our advantage to, to gain an advantage in a market. But the art part of it is it, it, there's some touchy-feely part to it too, right? Touchy-feely is sort of the interpretation of what, what the markets are doing and being a little bit flexible. Okay, you ready? Ready? Here's the next trade setup right here. I'm going to see how many of you paid attention in the last five minutes. This is going to be a, a follow-up question to the question I had before. Uh, Stephen, yeah, okay, 10 seconds on the clock. Where's the next trade? Um, okay, uh, Stephen, yes, in the case of a, uh, uh, a region box at or around the mid-band, you would be looking for a break of the box. If it was long only in the case of an uptrend, um, yeah, you would have to get a close above the top of the box. So we set the region box up accordingly. In the case of the short side, uh, yeah, when you set up the region box short only, and we have to close below the uh, the bottom of the box for the short. Right. All right. Where's the next trade? Five seconds left. This 
is a quiz. See how well you know your trade setups. Four seconds. Where's the next trade setup? Where is it going to be? Two seconds. Time's almost up. Where's the next trade going to be? You, you get up next Tuesday morning. You missed Monday. You had some commitments. Tuesday morning you get up and you're looking at YM and it looks like this. And you want to take some trades, so you got to decide where you're going to get in. I'm going to help you on this one. The trend is up, so you're getting long. So I'm helping you there. Trend is up. We're getting long. So where are you going to get long? You don't have a crystal ball, but we have tools here, and we have indicators, and we have the ability to plan. And here's what we're doing, essentially, just real quick, while you're typing in some very good answers. Um, we're planning ahead to anticipate what we're going to do to put the odds of success in our favor. That's why we do this. We plan ahead so that the odds of our success are in our favor. We're using our experience and the tools to give us the edge we need to be successful in trading these markets. Okay, time's almost up. One second. All right, good. Time's up. Wow, some great answers. Uh, excellent. I'm, I'm glad to see... Uh, Dave, I don't know that I'd be shorting this. It's pretty pretty good uptrend here. Uh, I think I'd be personally looking for a pullback um, into support. Many of you have typed in some ranges. Good. I don't see any hardly any any uh, mid band cop out answers. Good. Most of your answers were center, centered in this area right here, and that's perfect. Because, and, and this is how we, this is the healthy way to look at retracements, right? It's like we said just a few minutes ago, markets can retrace in a very shallow manner, like such. They can come back here, they can bounce and head up and take that top out, yes? They can come to the mid-band, we like that. Or just wick below it, just like right here, right? But the fact of the matter is, okay, I'm going to help you out on this one, and, and some of you noticed this, I noticed by your comments, is that, is that notice how there is a swing level right there. See how it's hit it twice? Like some of you just mentioned a double bottom right in there. That could be, right? So it's healthy for us to look at this area in the fact that it could come and retrace and check where? Right here. Isn't that the three, when we see a swing, now arguably it's under, under this swing, but the trend is still up, background is green, bars are blue. We are going a little bit sideways here, but we are stair-stepping up. Jim B, good, perfect. Draw a line along those two bottom points, exactly. Would we all agree that this little uh, area range box that I put in here is more or less the sweet spot of where we're looking for a bounce to get long on a trade entry. Yes? Good. Perfect. All right. So let's see what she does. Let's see what she does. All right. We're hitting our head at 812. Hitting our head again one more time. Pulling back. Pulling back. Sitting at the mid band. Sitting at the mid band. Coming back. Oh, now this thing is blocking it. Let me get this. I'm going to put this slightly lower so you can see a little bit better. Okay. But we know that line is supposed to be where those two dots are, right? All right. Okay. Here she's coming back. She's coming down. She's coming down. What happened right there? What is this right here? Anybody? Is this one, two, three? One, two, three. What is that candle right there? Okay, let me do another one. How about now? It bounced right off of support and reversed. That's right, Jimmy. Here was the box we drew ahead of time right here. This is our sweet spot for trade entry, yes? Market came right down to it. In fact, it broke it by just a couple of ticks with the wicks and the bottoms of those candles right there and reversed up right there. So where is your trade entry? long on that candle right there. 
Good. I think most of you seem to be picking this up because I think all the answers that I saw were right on the spot. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm happy to see that the answer to where is the next trade entry, you just don't type in the word mid-band. I don't want to say it's a cop-out, but the fact of the matter is it's a little more complicated than that in the fact that it's a range. It's not just a mid-band. There's a whole sort of area around it. We, ha we have to keep our little spidey trading sense up and be aware that it's more than just a number and a line, right? Good. Okay, let's see if we can squeak one or two more in here. I try to make it crystal clear, uh, Satith. I, I, I know sometimes, you know, the way I explain things might be a little confusing. I try to try to make it as clear as I can when I show these. Um, and, and that's so that when you see it in real time, you know, and the market's bouncing all over the place, that, you know, you can, you can sort of harken back to what we talked about here in terms of support and resistance, whether we're in a trend, you know, if we're range bound, how we get in, where we get in, should all sort of become part of your, your subconscious. And that's what you want to get to ultimately is, is to say to yourself, well, all right, I got a good one for you. This is the Russell. Ready? I think this was Friday. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't have a date on here, but this was a little bit later in the morning on the Russell. Ready? Well, you know, let me let me tee up this next trade, uh, Kathy, real quick. I'm I'm going to put 15 seconds on the clock, uh, and then t t let me tee up this next trade. Where's the next trade? Type it in when you uh, feel compelled to answer the question. Where's the next trade entry? And this one I'm going to mix it up a little bit. You have to say long or short. So L or S, and then where would you get in? L or S, where would you get in? 15 seconds on the clock. Um, Kathy has said something to the effect of, um, uh, when I see red candles, I, I hesitate and I get a little bit confused. So that's that's something to, to, try, to try to work. Part of it, of course, is a, a function of what time of day it is. You know, if you're at the open, or a news event, or a high energy time earlier in the morning where we get a lot of volatility, markets move around a lot. You know, we pay a little bit less attention to the colors of the background and the colors of the bars, simply because we're looking at, um, you know, the price action. We're focused more on the price action than we are the colors of the bars. All right, 12 seconds left. Where is the next trade? Long or short, where are you looking to get in? This is the last trade we're going to call out here today. Then we're going to wrap. What you going to do? Last trade of the morning. Long or short? And where are you looking to take it? It's Monday morning, 10 o'clock Pacific time. And you're watching the Russell chart. And it looks like this. So essentially the question is, what are you going to do? Now I realize you can't draw on this chart, and in fairness to, to help you, I probably should have put a couple of lines on here, but I'm gonna see how well everybody does with this question. Where are you getting in, long or short? Think about it, nine seconds. What you gonna do, Nazaru? Nope, this is not Nazaru. Russell. <laughs> Time's almost up. Three seconds. Are you buying or are you selling? And if you are, whatever trade you're gonna take, where is it located? Donde esta el tradio? I think that's uh, Spanish for where's the next trade? All right, time's almost, uh, two seconds, time's almost up. What you gonna do when he come for you? All right, that's it. Okay, so let me see, we got quite a few very, very good answers here. Uh, we are in a range, yes, Michelle. Uh, Adam, 
Looking for a reversal bar at support. Good. I see ranges typed up for most of you here. Uh, 80, 80, 38, 39 from Ralph. Everybody is taking longs. All right, good. Around the mid band. Okay, good. All right, good. Yes, we are looking for longs. Now, if you said that we are in a range, um, you are correct. Some of you typed in that we are in a range. Yes, we are in a range. Here's your resistance level more or less up in this area right here, right? One, two, three, four swings. Pretty well defined that we got resistance up here. Now, actually, there was a small handful. A couple of you said that you were shorting this. Now, you can do that um, in the by virtue of the fact that you are in the outermost band. We are sideways in a range. And you have two levels of support below here. You got one just under the mid band down in here. And you got a secondary one on that one little swing down in here. Right? So you are in a range. And so really the, the first question we should be asking ourselves is that range tradable. Remember our terms, 20 to 25 ticks? Let's take a quick look. Support down here at 3850-ish. And resistance up at 40, 90 ish. Yeah, 20, 21 ticks. This is sort of the lower end of acceptability in the in the uh, 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 trading of the range. And what I was going to say on the short side, addressing that short side of, of shorting the top of this range question again, is that you just did come off of a of a little push up here, which uh, turned the background green, and arguably you could be going into an uptrend. So that's the that's the risky side of shorting the top of the range, right? In fact, you could be consolidating before we get continuation in an uptrend move. So the risk of shorting the top is that you get a little blip down to get in short off of this area here, and then it quickly reverses and takes you out and heads back up. Yes, that is the risk up there. For me personally, if I saw a range like this, I'd be more inclined to be buying the bottom scalp in the top and looking for a runner, mainly because we came off of this push up here. Everybody follow that? Why we tend to want to uh, focus a little bit more on the buy side of things down in this area right here, off of support, right? So if you said that you were looking to buy and get long, uh, hold on a second, what the heck is this box doing? Anywhere kind of down in here. In my view, that was the correct answer. You're buying to get long down at a support area on a bounce. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's advance. Let's see what she does. All right. We're hitting our head. She's rolling over. You shorties would be in it. Yes? One, two, three. You shorties, if you did short that. Here again, I'm just emphasizing, I, I see that more of a, of a, of a, as a, a risky entry. If you are shorting uh, outermost bands like this on the top of a range, what is our goal? Your goal is to get to the mid band. Right. All right, we're coming down, we're coming down. All right, where is this bar right here? Anybody buying that bar? Yes or no? Five seconds. You buy that bar right there? Yes or no? A Y or an N. Bink! Hit it. Hit the button. Yes or no? Are you buying that bar right there? This one right here. This doji candle. Are you buying it? Yes or no? you got to decide right now. You can't think about it. Time's up. Quite a few no's. One yes. Mindy's buying it. Okay. Here we go. I'll give you one more candle. How about that bar? Yes or no? Five seconds. That bar. Yes or no? You can't think about it. Just hit the button. Boom. Hit it. Yes or no? This bar right here. This bar. Are you buying it? Yes or no? That one. You got to decide. Hmm. Interesting. Real mix. More yeses. More yeses. A couple of no's sprinkled in. One more bar. I'm going to get one more bar. Ready? Here we go. How about that bar? Okay, I'll give you one more. How about that bar? Yes or no? Four seconds. Four seconds. Hit the Y or N. Y or N. That bar right there. Are you buying yes or no? Are you in this trade? Yes or no? Two seconds. Two seconds. 
Yes or no? Why or in? Hit the button. All right, time's up. All right, we got all yeses. Good. Now, this was a little bit tougher one in the fact that the, the no? Okay. All right. Well, you maybe missed the trade because it bounced, and there she goes. Back up to the top and takes it out. That turns into be a most excellent trade, by the way. Not only did you hit your uh, uh, scalp target here at the top of the range, bingo. You got the runner, too. Blammo. Takes it out and turns it. This is a most excellent trade right here. See that? Winner, winner, chicken dinner, off you go. Now, I was a little bit of a, a, a tough questioning round there with my little five-second pop bar program. The fact of the matter is, and none of you said this, but I was kind of waiting to see if I was going to see that, is you could have actually boxed it in down here, right? Isn't that right? Couldn't you have boxed it in? It doesn't have to be bar by bar. I did that to see how many of you were paying attention to the whole bar by bar question and whether you would use bar reversal. The fact of the matter is you don't have to use bar reversal. You could have just simply taken a, a region box or you could have used the line tool or the ray tool. Sniper lines, you know, how, uh, any, any tool in the object trader toolkit there you could have used to get in. I probably personally would have put a region box around it and not been filled till this bar right here long right there. I would have probably boxed it in and been long on that bar right there. So you bipped up, checked it, and then off to the races she went. Why don't we take it a breakout top? Well, you got to be careful here, David. If, you, if you're referring to coming up here, uh, we're not, you know, many, many, many years ago, long, long time ago, we were breakout traders. Okay, we were breakout traders. We don't do that anymore simply because it's much more prone to head fakes. We much more like retracements to support, retracements to resistance, taking rollover bars, boxing it in at or near the mid-band. Those are the trades we gravitate towards now, especially if you're looking at a range and you're looking for breakouts. So many times you can get head fakes. Richard, see that help? That help you today? All right, good. That's a wrap. Let me turn off the recorder. I hope that